Hello everyone. Today I'm going to tell you uh, the stories related to what I can only call a time capsule of World War II souvenirs that uh, were picked up in the French region of Haute-Savoie in 1944 and that were preserved by, uh, by uh, the, the person in the picture. Uh, and uh, we'll look at each of these objects individually and then go into the history of uh, of the units that were in the area. So uh, the things were, were, were picked up in Haute-Savoie and the, it's a region of France and what's particular peculiar about this region is that as you can see here on the on the map it borders Switzerland so uh, both to the north and to the east and it's known that the German units that were in occupation in the area were SS Polizei Regiment 19 and Reserve Division 157. And uh, the person who, uh, who had these objects had, uh, had them from his family. So first of all he had this helmet and uh, the, the family story was that his great uncle who was in the French resistance had killed a German soldier and kept this helmet from the soldier as a souvenir. And um, he was hoping it might be able to be possible to find out who the soldier was, uh, find out his name and all that. So the helmet has this uh, German Air Force Eagle on it, as you can see. And inside the helmet there's these dark stains that, according to the man, were blood stains. But unfortunately there's no name written anywhere, and uh, so there's no way of linking this helmet to a particular person. And regarding the stains, I really have no idea if this is really blood or if it's just some, something else that happens to, to look like blood. I might make a video in the future uh, testing this, these stains to see if they actually are blood or not. So that's the first item from this time capsule. The second item, the, the most interesting one, is this cap. So a German army cap. It has a... Uh, an eagle on the front, which, uh, which, is not, which is not an army eagle, but a German police eagle. So presumably it must have belonged to this SS Polizei Regiment number 19. Oh, and before I forget about this, uh, the regiment was called SS Police Regiment 19, but it actually was not really an SS unit. What happened is that in 1944, uh, for some reason, all the police battalions were renamed SS Police Battalion or SS Police Regiment. Uh, even though the men are actually not members of the SS and they don't have SS badges, as you can see. So, although they were called SS Police Battalion, they were not truly uh, a unit of SS men. On the side it has this uh, German Mountain Troop badge, the Edelweiss. And most interestingly, inside the cap you see it has uh, a name tag for the soldier and a number. So 1 slash 72. So let's go into that and see what that actually means. So we know that SS Polizei Regiment 19 was in the area, so presumably the cap must have belonged to them. So you look up Police Regiment 19 on Wikipedia, and you see that when the unit was formed, it was formed of three battalions that already existed, Police Battalion 72, 171, and 181. And when the, the regiment was formed, Battalion 72 became the 1st Battalion of the Regiment, Battalion 171 became the 2nd Regiment, and 181 became the 3rd Battalion of the Regiment. So what this actually means here, 1 slash 72, is that this guy was in the 1st Company of the 72nd Police Battalion, which then became the 1st Company of the 1st Battalion of Polizei Regiment 19. And then you have his name, Führer Hans, and you know that looking up German soldiers can be difficult if you don't have their dates of birth. Um, but in this case, there's something uh, peculiar, I'm not sure why, but German police uh, soldiers, they don't only have their, um, their files preserved at the archives in Berlin, they also have uh, f files preserved at local archives for some reason. And when it comes to SS Police Regiment number 19, while the State Archives in Munich actually also have uh, all, the, all the files of the men from this unit. So when you write to the, the archives in Berlin, there's you know, millions and millions of files, which makes research difficult. But here they just have the archives, or the, the files of the men 
of this one unit, which means that you can research the people much more easily. And uh, sure enough, I did manage to look up this uh, Hans Fütterer, who the cap belonged to. And um, you can see that it says here that uh, in civilian life he was an accountant and he had one child. He was called up in the army in September 1939, so it means this guy was not, you know, a career policeman or a career soldier. He was a civilian and he was enlisted into the army when the war started. And then it says that since August 14th, 1944, he's, in, uh, he's a prisoner of the French. And uh, indeed, um, when the Allies landed in southern France, the Haute-Savoie region uh, basically was uh, infested with uh, resistance fighters. So uh, pretty much all the Germans there were either killed or became prisoners of war in the next few days. And on the other side of his card, it specifies that he had received um, the German War Merit Cross, which was one of the medals the Germans had during the war. And uh, regarding the Edelweiss on the side of the cap, I really have no idea why it was there because uh, SS Police Regiment 19 was not supposed to, to, to have this on its cap. But I don't know, maybe the soldier decided to wear it anyways because he was involved in the mountains. I, I really don't know. Now, uh, one of the other items in the grouping is this German backpack. It also has a name on it, and if we assume it might be from uh, the same police regiment, well, we look the guy up again, and we also find a card that could correspond to him. You see, Walter Jan. He was also in uh, the 1st Battalion. He was also captured by the French in August 1944. He was also called up after the war started, you see, in February 1940. And his civilian job was cook. And then in the grouping, there's a few more uh, random items. These are um, uh, rationing cards. You see they belong to a guy called Franz Eigner. This is another document also for this Franz Eigner. And in this case, it has his uh, field post number written down, 57205. And if we look that unit up, it also corresponds to police regiment number 19. So almost all these things are from the, the police regiment. For this, Franz Eignet has another document that says that uh, his uh, house was damaged by an air raid. So this might explain some of the behavior we're going to talk about later on, knowing that these guys had their, their own houses uh, being bombed while they were away at the front. And then there's a private letter. See, it says, uh, from your faithful friend, girlfriend. Some penance for a party that happened in 1939 in a village called Donbir, Donbian. So apparently they knew how to have a, a good time in this village. There's this bag with a swastika on it. And a German belt buckle. This is the last thing that had been preserved by the family. And um, you see it says Gott mit uns on it. It means God with us. This is often associated to the to Nazi Germany, but actually it has nothing to do with Nazi Germany. The Germans already had this motto uh, during World War I on many of their belt buckles. So we saw all, all these items. Um, most of them belonged apparently to the police unit. Uh, this belt buckle did not. This is a normal German belt buckle for the army. It could also have belonged to border guard units because there were also border guards, of course, in Haute Savoie since it was bordering Switzerland. Now we're going to see a couple of events that Polizei Regiment 19 was involved in uh, while they were in Haute Savoie. So the first event we're going to talk about is in a village called Eugene. Uh, 